Is the world around us exactly as it seems? Is reality even real? Or do we live inside a computer simulation? And if so, what's the evidence? The likes of Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Elon Musk all seem obsessed with the idea, with simulation theory almost turning into some kind of religion. But do you believe a race of super-advanced masters control our world and our every move? Well, you might, after you hear the three reasons why we are living in a simulation. Number 3. Technology Despite simulation theory existing for thousands of years in various forms, one of the most compelling comments on the subject came just a few years ago in 2003 from philosopher Nick Bostrom, in a paraphrased version of a statement taken from his groundbreaking essay. He argued that a trilemma exists regarding the idea of a simulated world, and that at least one of the following statements must be true. Civilizations like us will almost certainly never be interested in running advanced computer simulations of their ancestors. Or, and this one's the kicker, that civilizations who share our kind of human experience are almost certainly living inside a simulation. What this means is that if humans one day do figure out how to build a realistic computer simulation of our world today, and we can be bothered to do it, then it's more likely that we exist in a simulation today than the real world. If such worlds can be constructed, it's highly unlikely that we would be living in an age when humans first did this for real, and more likely that we inhabit one of many realities in a trickle-down series of inception-like worlds. But what happens when we reach the point of creating our own realities? Will we be allowed to create our own simulation inside a simulation, in an ever-continuing chain which puts real pressure on the power bill for the guys at the top? Or will our simulation be stopped or rebooted when we reach a certain technological level? I imagine we'll find out pretty soon, since we are well on the way towards creating fully immersive simulation technology. In a previous Strange Mysteries video on the four questions that will make you question reality, we explained how the recent rapid improvements to virtual reality tech and artificial intelligence make the eventual creation of believable simulations almost inevitable. Today, we can build three-dimensional environments for you to walk around in and experience. And one day, these will be so complex that someone could be born connected to one and never know. Some might say that humans will never mistake a virtual world for a synthetic one. The fact is we do this already. You suspend reality while watching a movie. You inhabit a new world of fiction when reading a book, and people sit for hours happy to exist inside a computer game. Now, of course, these places only seem real to a degree, as however much you invest yourself emotionally into the development of a story or the life of a character, the events of the outside world are capable of snapping you out of it. But what if you couldn't perceive these outside events? And what if you never had? Would you question your existence? Sure, you might. But how far would you take it? How could you conceive of reality if you'd never truly experienced it? Also, the key phrase we used in the previous paragraph is that these virtual places, these fantasy worlds, they only seem real to a degree. This implies we're not yet at a place where we can use something external to trick the human mind, but that we are on our way. And it is almost certainly going to be possible at some point in the future. But simulation theory might not be achieved in the way most people envision, because what we failed to mention in all of our previous musings on this subject is that building a 3D world might not even be necessary in the first place as the human brain could just do all the work for us. 2. Your Primitive Brain Every day and every night, we conjure up vivid dreams, mental pictures, and crystal-clear memories which we're certain we once experienced. But did we? 
How can you be sure? Through complex brain mapping, we now know for a fact that the human brain can be manipulated and stimulated in certain artificial ways, allowing people to feel, see, and experience things which aren't there. So, even if humans never develop the technology required to build a fully immersive virtual reality world, isn't it still likely that one day we'll be able to suggest one by influencing the human mind? Or if we can't, someone else will. Someone more superior than us. Neil deGrasse Tyson posed this very notion during 2016's Isaac Asimov Memorial Debate at the American Museum of Natural History when he highlighted the gap between human and chimpanzee intelligence. We share 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees, yet the vast difference in our intellectual capabilities means one group sits around flinging its own feces and peeing on themselves, and the other are chimpanzees. Hey, if it's good enough for the president of America, I say go for it. Hashtag yellow Watergate. But you get the point. Imagine a race of beings whose DNA was similar to our own, but whose intellectual gap was of the same magnitude chimps experience when confronted with the superintelligence of humans. We'd seem like simple dribbling morons to those guys. So, is it so unlikely that such an advanced race might eventually gain a powerful understanding of the way our primitive minds work? How we process information and can be confused and manipulated, or rather, how we could be enslaved. And that is, of course, assuming that we ever existed as a free species at all. What if humanity and our world are entirely virtual creations? What if our minds are as artificial as those we build on computers and in fiction? Eh, sure, we have self-awareness, but if this supposedly unique property can be generated by our brain's neurons, is it impossible that this could be replicated artificially using silicone? Many scientists are starting to believe so. They're starting to believe that we could one day create machines with self-awareness, with human levels of consciousness. So if that's true, maybe there is no matrix to escape from, because we've never existed in reality at all. And at number one, it solves a lot of problems. There are many things about the universe we haven't yet explained, but some scientists are starting to believe that the simulation theory works like a catch-all for things we haven't figured out. For example, according to theoretical physicist Dr. Brian Greene, the Big Bang theory just doesn't add up. The math involved leaves too many unanswered questions, with the doctor quoted as saying, We used to consider the Big Bang a singular event that gave rise to one universe. But the math shows you don't use up all that fuel in a single Big Bang. In fact, the bang itself winds up generating more of the fuel which generates other bangs, other universes. Okay, but just because our existing model of how things came to exist might be flawed, that doesn't mean we're living inside the Matrix, does it? Well, it might. Because maybe the reason we don't know how the universe works is because we're not supposed to know. This may seem like the kind of thing David Icke would sell a bazillion books about, but it's solid truth that as we have come to understand ever more about the physics of the world around us, we have noticed that many of the numbers seem… eerily convenient? The whole thing seems based on a certain set of mathematical rules. Is this coincidence? Or have the laws of our world been rigidly decided by someone else? It is thought that a believable simulation should have such rules to allow for a consistent universe to exist within it. And another major aspect of a successfully immersive virtual reality is that there would be nothing within it that would allow reality to be proven. And in regards to this, it does seem that there are an awful lot of things humans cannot do. Places we cannot go. Experiences kept permanently beyond our reach. We can't travel at the speed of light. And even if we could, we'd be limited in how much of the universe we could ever explore. We can't get too close to the sun. We can't survive a trip through a black hole. We can't see what's beyond the edge of our own universe. Is it just me, or do these limitations feel an awful lot like the edge of the map in a video game? Any minute now, you might glitch through the floor and see all the objects those lazy ass developers never cleared up. Another compelling argument for simulation theory involves the theory in quantum mechanics which states 
that a particle's past behavior changes based on what we see. Scientists have proven this theory true, and according to the rules of quantum mechanics, the lines between our own subjective consciousness and the universe are extremely blurred. At the quantum level, reality does not exist unless you observe it. Furthermore, it changes because you did. Once more, this seems a lot like something you'd see in a video game with technological constraints. Does our universe have a draw distance? Does Australia exist when you're not there? If you're not looking at or interacting with your sofa, your sandwich, or your sister, do they even exist? According to MIT physicist Zoré Davoudi, a simulated world would be a complex one and likely would cut corners to make it easy to run. These errors would be visible as in disappearing objects, strange fluctuations in space-time, or a mass unexplainable déjà vu experience. But as for going the other way, proving that the world is real and not a simulation, this seems impossible. As New York University professor David Chalmers explained when he said, You're not going to get proof that we're not in a simulation, because any evidence that we get could be simulated. And that's another Strange Mysteries mind felch over and done with. How are you feeling right now? Do you need a lie down? Me too! But instead of listening to soothing ocean sounds, why not watch our recent video on the secrets of Disney for a nice change of pace?